The internet is filled with strangers and very shady people. Even content creators that make very innocent videos hide a very dark secret. But let's just go straight to the point. I'm going to talk about another classic internet mystery and see if you still remember it. In the intro, I showed you a video of an old man laughing maniacally with sinister background music. What I didn't show was at the end of the video, it says, Happy Anniversary. The reason for that is because the title of this video is Happy Anniversary and it was uploaded by a username called Mr112Dirtbag and this was uploaded on February 8, 2012. This video was deleted hours later after it was uploaded. Of course, this isn't Mr112Dirtbag's only video. He also had other videos but they aren't easy to find since the channel and most of the videos were deleted. I even tried finding some archives but I only found, you know, a few videos. But let's focus on this video specifically. Happy Anniversary. When it's your first time watching the video, you might find it creepy or maybe even hilarious. If you find this hilarious, I don't know, you have a fucking weird sense of humor. But you may be wondering, who is this video for? Why is it called Happy Anniversary? Happy Anniversary for what? This video left a lot of people on the internet wondering those questions. People theorize that this guy is just crazy and you know, celebrating the first time he nut. Oh, so that's why you find it hilarious. Some people believe that this is just one of those weird YouTube videos that just made no sense and only exists to creep people out. But there are some people who believe that Mr. 112 Dirtbag is involved in an actual crime. Route 112, Woodsville, or Haverhill, depending who you ask. The sharp end in the road is where this mystery started to unfold February 9th, 2004. This is Mara Murray. She's a nursing student at the University of Massachusetts, Amherst, and she disappeared on February 9, 2004, after her car crashed on Route 112 in Haverhill, New Hampshire. Before she disappeared, Mara looked up MapQuest for directions to the Berkshires and Burlington, Vermont. At 1 p.m., Mara emailed her boyfriend, I got your messages, but honestly, I didn't feel like talking too much of anyone. I promised to call today, though. And at the same time, she called a condo association her family had vacation at in the past and asked if she could rent a condominium. 24 minutes later, Mara emailed a work supervisor at the nursing school faculty that she would be out of town for a week due to a death in her family. But the thing was, there was no death in the family. And an hour later, she finally called her boyfriend and left a voice message promising him they would talk later. The call only lasted for a minute. She packed almost all of her belongings in her black Saturn sedan. At 3.40 p.m., Mara was caught by a security camera withdrawing $280 from an ATM by herself. After that, she bought almost $40 worth of alcohol at a nearby liquor store. It was also found in her car that she obtained registry of motor vehicle accident reports forms that day. Mara then left Amherst, presumably via Interstate 91 North. The last recorded use of her cell phone was at 4.37 p.m. when she called back to check her voicemail. Around 7 p.m., a school bus driver who was returning home noticed the young woman was not bleeding but cold and shivering. 
He offered the telephone for help. She pleaded with him not to call the police and assured him that she'd already called AAA, despite the AAA having no record of any such call. Knowing there was no cell phone reception in the area, the bus driver called the police anyway. When the police arrived at the scene, there was no one inside or around the car. This happened to the car. The car was locked inside and outside. The car he discovered had red stains that looked to be red wine. The officer found a damaged box of Franzia wine on the rear seat. In addition, he found a AAA card issued to Mara Murray. Blind crash report forms, gloves, compact discs make up two sets of MapQuest driving directions and other belongings of Mara Murray. What were missing though were Mara's debit card, credit cards, and cell phone, none of which have been located or used since her disappearance. At around 8 to 8.30 p.m., a contractor returning home from Franconia saw a young person moving quickly on foot eastbound on Route 112 about 4 to 5 miles east of where Mara's vehicle was discovered. He noted that the young person was wearing jeans, a dark coat, and light-colored hood. He didn't report it to the police immediately due to his own confusion of dates, only discovering three months later when reviewing his work records that he'd spotted the young person the same night Mara disappeared. Till this day, Mara Murray was never found. There are many theories on what happened to her, but this video is not about Mara Murray but it is about Mr. 112 Dirtbag. So let's go back to 112 Dirtbag. You may be wondering, how is he related to the disappearance of Mara Murray? Well, you might think that the date when he uploaded the happy anniversary video just a day before Mara's 8th year anniversary of her disappearance was just a coincidence, but it isn't. Now let me tell you why. Remember, Mara disappeared and her car crashed on Route 112 in Haverhill, New Hampshire. And in an interview about the case, Mara's father called to the people who quote-unquote kidnapped her were a bunch of dirtbags. Those two informations may be the inspiration of his username, 112 Dirtbag. If you still think that's a coincidence, then I'm still not giving up. This is one of Mr. 112 Dirtbag's video. It is called Mara Murray. The video shows a ticket to Bretton Woods Mountain Resort and it was issued on February 11, 2004, which was two days after she disappeared. This video was taken down a day after it was uploaded. Another video was called No Hope for Mental Wannabe. I couldn't find the video since it no longer exists on YouTube, but a YouTuber named Scare Theater had a clip of the video, and this is what's in it. Mr. 112 Dirtbag was making music, and this image at the end of the video appeared. According to a man named James Renner, the face resembles the map of Bretton Woods Mountain Resort. The other videos can no longer be found, or at least I'm too lazy to find them. So that leads us to the question, who is Mr. 112 Dirtbag? Well, the real name of 112 Dirtbag is Alden Olsen. Turns out the police actually investigated him and found nothing. He had nothing to do with the case. He was just a creepy old man seeking attention or wanted to be a part of the case since he was very interested in it. He could be mentally ill, but I don't know, we can't be sure. It is also unsure how he is right now, but the channel was already deleted. Like I said, Mara Murray is still not found and still missing. I believe that Mara Murray just ran away and started a new life with a new name and all. If you have any information about what happened to Mara Murray, call New Hampshire State Police at this number. I also need to appreciate this guy named James Renner. He's an investigative journalist and he was the one who saved Mr. 112 Dirtbag's videos before they were deleted and gave the Mara Murray case more attention. Almost all of his Mara Murray videos are private except for the Mara Murray one with the ticket. He also made a blog about the Mara Murray case but it is now deleted. You know what? I have this theory. 
James Renner could have known Alden Olsen aka 112 Dirtbag and made him do these videos to give this case more attention and well, for attention. Hear me out, he saved the videos hours before the video was deleted. How could he find these videos so quickly? And he also has an interest in true crime and he's a published author talking about non-fiction cases. Maybe 112 Dirtbag is his way to get attention so that people would read his book. But hey, that's just a theory. A GAME THEORY That's all I could say about 112 Dirtbag. I hope you enjoyed this video and if there are internet mysteries you want me to talk about or any shitty content you want me to comment about, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. After that, she bought almost $40 worth of alcohol at a nearby liquor store. Oh my fucking god, that fucking dog, I want to murder him.